Ethiopia says journalists should work on the burning questions of the public at large in a positive, problem-solving way. But what happens if you decide to try and hold the government to account? Well, human rights groups say the chances are you'll end up in jail under anti-terror legislation that's being used and abused to stop the media reporting the truth. That's what we'll be discussing this week on Africa Today. Ethiopia would prefer its journalists to concentrate on good news, and there's plenty of that around. The country has been hailed as an African lion, overtaking Kenya to become East Africa's largest economy. But those who hold the government to account are increasingly under attack. Five journalists are currently detained in Kaliti prison near Addis Ababa, with Somali reporter Mohamed Awes serving a sentence of 27 years. Human rights groups fear the West is looking the other way because Ethiopia has long been a key ally in the so-called war on terror. Groups like Human Rights Watch and the African Freedom of Expression Exchange are renewing calls on the government to end the practice of jailing media workers using anti-terrorist legislation. Let's talk about this now with Alemo Ayele, an e exiled Ethiopian journalist. Also in the studio is Commander Asifa Seifu, formerly of the Ethiopian Navy, now an independent opposition activist. And joining us on the line from New York in the US is Mohamed Keita, Advocacy Coordinator for Africa at the Committee to Protect Journalists. Welcome to all of you, gentlemen. Thanks. I'll start off with you, uh, Alemo Ayele. Um, how critical would you say is the situation for journalists at the moment? At the moment, the Ethiopian regime is um, blindly repressing uh, freedom of expression and journalists. That's why Ethiopia is the second largest African, uh, can, in Africa, the second largest jailers of journalists. And it's one of the top country whose journalists are fleeing from their country. And uh, according to the Open Net initiatives, at least a minimum of 73 websites have been blocked by the government. What do you make of the government's defense or justification for this action? Uh, they say, and I was in Addis Ababa myself uh, last year for the African Media Leaders Forum, and I heard uh, the Prime Minister, Halim Mariam Desalen, say, uh, we want to support good journalism, but we want journalists to be partners in development, developmental journalism. And he also said, no journalist in Ethiopia has been jailed for anything they wrote. It's because of terrorist associations. We have um, unstable neighbours next door to us. We cannot be too careful. I think you have been told the joke of the season, if not the centuries. Otherwise, Mr. Haile Mariam knows that he cannot express what he feels. But what he is told by the, his TPLF bosses or few individuals of the regime. What are so you talking about? Are you saying that he is, although he's prime minister, he's not in control I and there are other people who are forcing him to say these that things? That is my perception and I think that is true. If dig deep down, if you look at how the, stru the structure and how they share power. Mm. Otherwise, in regarding to the journalist, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, CPJ, International Federation of Journalists, and other organizations of freedom of expression mm -hmm. have been satisfied that Ethiopia is one of the countries where journalists have been uh, clamped right. well, down. You mentioned the CPJ, the Committee to Protect Journalists. We have them yeah. on the line. Now, Mohamed Keita is in New York. Mohamed Keita, how would you characterize the government's relationship with uh, journalists in uh, Ethiopia at the moment. How concerned are you about individuals like Eskinder Nega, who is serving an 18-year term, Wubchet Taye, 14 years, a very famous case, Riot Elimu, uh, 1,000 days and counting in prison. And then, of course, as mentioned in the report, Awais Mude, a Somali, sentenced to 27 years in prison, um, starting that sentence in February. Uh, yes, we're extremely preoccupied by the health, especially, of Riyadh Alemu and Wubshed Tai. Their health have deteriorated in custody, and they have been uh, denied adequate medical attention. And authorities have also um, conducted reprisals against them, um, hardening or harshening their uh, detention conditions, or den uh, moving them from prison to prison or denying family visits. 
And uh, we are extremely preoccupied because, in, unfortunately, Ethiopia has already a precedent where uh, back in 1998, a journalist died in, uh, you know, after being denied uh, adequate medical attention um, while in jail. And, uh, you know, that journalist was also in jail for uh, writing articles. So there is a very sad precedent. And well, Ethiopia is not the only country that jails journalists, of course. Uh, why do you think these particular journalists have been in prison? There are ma many others who operate um, in the country and who haven't uh, caught the attention of the authorities. Uh, yes, th these journalists are some of the most prominent in Ethiopia, and we believe they were jailed in order to silence others into, si into basically silence. But what was wrong um, with what they wrote, though? I mean, in terms of their journalism, the, because this the, is a critical factor, isn't it? The, when the government um, notices you, then it's something that you've written that they disagree with. What was wrong with what they wrote? <laughs> there is absolutely nothing wrong with anything they wrote. Um, anyone can consult and read the articles they have written. Eskinder's articles are available in English. His words are very clear. Um, they wrote about the issues of the day-to-day -day Ethiopians face, the lack of democracy, the corruption, uh, the ruling power, uh, abuse of power, issues that everybody knows. They just articulated these issues in a very public way. They did not have secret meetings. Um, we looked at the evidence presented by government prosecutors in all these cases, and they amount to articles they wrote. Um, and none of these journalists called for violence. None of them called for people to get on the streets. Um, in the case of Iskinder, he wrote about the implications of the Arab Spring in Ethiopia yeah. uh, for Ethiopia's pro-democracy movement and basically just stated that if the government does not um, do democratic reform, it's increasing the likelihood of popular protest. All right, Mohammed, let and me bring some of those simple. thoughts uh, back to the studio and run them by a uh, commander here. Now, commander, you are very senior in the Ethiopian Navy. You man, you're a man who understands law and order, and the first duty of a government is defense of the realm. Can you understand why a government that came to power after a war some 20 or so years ago would be nervous if it felt a journalist was fanning the flames of either insurrection or doubt in its own country. May I first thank Mohammed, Mr. Cato, for highlighting the problems of Ubushet, who has a kidney problem, mm -hmm. serious kidney problem, and Rio Talamu, who has his breast problem, yes. and who have been denied medical help. This could be very serious. Yes. On top of that, Rio is being harassed by the prison authorities, not directly, but by people that have been sent within prisoners to society. So these are some things that have to be highlighted, as have by all uh, uh, journalists, mm -hmm. as then Wubishet and Rio Talam's case have been highlighted. Another thing that we need to talk about is about facts. You brought up the case of Haile Mariam yes. saying that. I'll come to what's your question. May I exemplify this with a very interesting scenario? Yes. In one country, there was one accomplished liar. One person, a friend of his said, it would be a pity if such an art were not to be passed on. And the liar said, but he's trading his son. So one day, he was testing his son and said, he looked up and said, look, son, do you see what's happening in the sky? He said, what? Wheat is being thrashed in the sky. The, 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 man, the, the young man looked up and said, oh, father, my eyes are full of shafts. And he said, you have graduated. Hi, Mariam is a trainee of the most accomplished liar. Are you talking the about his predecessor? His predecessor. Mele Zanawi. Absolutely. Who, who was received with acclaim toward the latter part of his 20 or so year rule uh, in the capitals of uh, this country, the UK, in Paris, in the United States, as somewhat of an African visionary. That's only because he was a servant 
not of his people and his country and his religion or his heredity and history, but an instrument of those that wanted to revenge on the history of Ethiopia for standing up to colonialism. It's interesting you say that, Commander, because there are some who say one reason why the Western governments haven't pointed the finger too directly at Ethiopia for jailing journalists is that it is using its instrument, the legal instrument, to imprison journalists because it's an ally of the West in the so-called war on terror. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. It, when, uh, uh, this terrorism is an excuse. Uh, somebody said that a country that has little or no respect for itself introduces so many laws to make sure that people, so the, the, the people of that country cannot move right, left, up or down. And are you are thinking of the them. 2009 anti-terrorism proclamation, the most recent one? So yeah. many of them. Now, you asked me whether a government has the duty to maintain peace and security. Yes, if that government was the people's choice and the people's uh, preference. Yeah. These people were not chosen or elected by the people. They have imposed themselves on the country. They have held elections though. Quasi-elections, artificial elections. They have 99.8% of the parliamentary seat by themselves. And only one independent or uh, of another party well, the big question, Commander, then is, and I'll put this to all of you, have the journalists in some ways been their own worst enemies? Because, of course, there are several journalistic organisations and very often they're fighting each other. You know, we have the Ethiopian Journalists Forum, we have the Ethiopian Journalists Association, Ethiopian Free Journalists Association, Ethiopian National Journalists Union fighting each other. What should they be doing? I think... The regime in Ethiopia is very good in promoting this lapdog media, creating its own um, media outlets and uh, make, uh, dividing the journalists among themselves. Otherwise, the real journalism association is in exile. Because there's a gentleman called Shimelis Kamal, the deputy head of the Government Communication Affairs Office, and he's saying um, that the journalistic standards are very poor. Uh, many of the journalists don't write facts. It's all of opinion. They don't back up what they're saying with evidence. So you can see why the government is determined to make sure, maybe to rid um, the media of bad operators. That's what it seems to be saying. Yeah, but we shouldn't forget that. Mangusto was saying the same thing. Mangusto was saying that he was ruling people for people and he formed political parties in the name of the people. And the same thing is happening. No dictator in this world, let's say, I'm against people. Every dictator says they are working for people while killing people. So in terms of uh, promoting media, at the moment the Ethiopian regime is not mm. promoting independent media, to my uh, observation, and as a lot of media uh, human rights organizations Certified. Well, the question though, and I put this to you, Mohammed Keita, mm -hmm. is one of the problems for these journalistic organizations in Ethiopia who campaign for press freedom that uh, their funding and their support often comes from outside, from organizations like yours, the Committee to Protect Journalists. So the Ethiopian government can then say, oh, well, look, you're serving a foreign interest, a foreign agenda, instead of supporting a government. Oh, first of all, I want to correct that CPJ does not fund any press organization around the world. Not you, so but there are organizations correct. which do support um, journalistic organizations or bodies within Ethiopia and elsewhere in Africa. Yeah, that is a false argument given the fact that the Ethiopian government relies on extensive external support to fund its own operation and to feed its people. I mean, that, that is just selective outrage and that is that is a non-issue really that is an excuse 
And as far as most of the other press uh, organiz- uh, press unions existing in Ethiopia, they're all funded and controlled by the government underhanded. So they are not really independent press unions. They are not really campaigning to free the journalists or defending press freedom in the country. They are, in fact, echoing the government's own um, rhetoric around this. And uh, it's the government has been very good at spreading confusion here and there. And they do not have the moral high standard to lecture anybody on journalism, given the fact that the state media and the pro-government media um, regularly prints editorials and columns with um, naked slander, branding um, independent journalists as terrorists, as traitors, as uh, individuals involved in activities with al-Shabaab, I mean, the, the level of, of propaganda and smear campaigns by the state media is absolutely disgusting. And so it's kind of hypocritical for them to be uh, trying to point the finger at the private press and say the private press is unethical and, and not reporting truths. Okay, Mohamed Keita, for the moment, thank you very much. Now, lots of our viewers have been leaving comments on our Facebook page this week, so let's take a look at a few, and we'll start with Linda Grant from here in the UK, and she says, why does Britain continue to stand by and play deaf and dumb to the cries of journalists and human rights groups around the world? It is the usual politics at play. Press freedom is being systematically destroyed by the Ethiopian government. Anyone who dares to be critical risks being jailed or even tortured. We have another post from Abdel Alim who says, Human rights groups are overly critical of Mela Zenawi's legacy. His government is the reason we now have a multi-party political system in Ethiopia. He also introduced a private press in Ethiopia. And finally this from somebody calling himself Steve Biko, and who says, There is no such thing as a free press in Ethiopia. They are throwing journalists in jail and calling them terrorists. Why are our African leaders so thin-skinned, so fearful of criticism? Well, if you would like to have your say, here's how you can do so. Keep your thoughts coming in. You can email us or text us. Go to our Facebook fan page. Or you can follow us on Twitter. Well, let's pick up on one or two of those points from our Facebook correspondents. And Commander, um, they seem to be saying that Britain and the US need to be telling Ethiopia essentially what to do. They shouldn't be turning a blind eye. But is it really the business of London and Washington to be wagging their finger at um, Ethiopia? Uh, It's very interesting. Is it the business? Unfortunately, it is. It is. Unfortunately. It's not only the business of these countries. They enforce so many things that are alien to various countries because it was in the interest of these countries, i.e. Britain Britain and the the US and other powerful and rich countries. Poor people have to, poor countries or governments so-called, have to obey. You, from the outset, mentioned the anti-terrorism law. Yes, yes. Any law is supposed to be, uh, is not supposed to be supra the constitution. Yes. What does the constitution say about uh, uh, the uh, uh, right of thoughts, opinion, and expression? Everyone has the right to hold opinions without interference. Everyone has the right to freedom of expression without any interference. This right shall include freedom to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds, regardless of frontiers, either orally, in writing, or in print, in the form of art, or through any other. It goes on. Nothing that these journalists that are uh, suffering in jail have done in contravention of the constitutional right that they have been given. Not an iota. Because of that, the various institutions that you mentioned, the Press International, have given them accolades of praise and prizes while still in prison. Indeed they have. Who do we believe? Kailamaram and co? Or these independent 
Uh, nevertheless, uh, Commander, and uh, Alema, I'll put this to you. Ethiopia isn't the only government in Africa or elsewhere beyond uh, which is accused of repressing journalists, repressing uh, press freedom. And some uh, do so because they're concerned about security, like Rwanda, for example. And some Western governments say, look, some of these countries have been through so much hell, they're still developing, give them time. And when they've developed, then journalists can be the fourth estate. They can then criticize and they can do what they do so well in the West. Does any part of you accept that, that Ethiopia is still developing and as the government says, we want partners in development and the media must be a partner? Because the Kenyans say this too, the, the Rwandans say this too. Do you understand that at all? I think um, the value you are discussing is freedom of expression is universal human norm, hu universal human values. And uh, the people of Ethiopia knows what to do and what they want. The African dictators, including the Ethiopian regime, are saying this just to keep their people under their dictatorial rule. Otherwise, they know what they, the people know what they want. And they but, but, if, okay, but if the people were really free to express themselves as you want them to be, what would they say? Definitely, they will, uh, they will vote for their, uh, their uh, representative and they can design, they can vote for their, any, uh, for developmental strategies, whatever, whatever they want. Right. And uh, uh, the people of Ethiopia are not less than human beings than any Western society. Okay. Let me finish with you, Mohamed Keita, from the Committee to Protect Journalists. What do you think the next step is then? Because these journalists aren't getting out of jail anytime soon, despite the pressure you and other international organizations put on um, Addis Ababa. Uh, well, I mean, I think the solution is in the hands of the Ethiopian government. Um, they know what the what they can what they should be doing, um, and it's sad that it's it's going to take longer for them to really realize that they are against history because the trend is towards freedom. It's a natural uh, impulse, and even China that the Ethiopian government is copying. Even in China, China is trending towards more freedom because the Chinese leaders are understanding that in order to achieve the full economic development, they need to relax a little bit. So hopefully the Ethiopian government will get it. But in the meantime, as the longer they keep these journalists, the louder the voices for their release um, will grow. And, you know, Jailing journalists is really a statement of fear. We understand that the Ethiopian government was fearful when the Arab Spring began and that this was in reaction to it, fearing that they would face an uprising. Um, and so, you know, it, it's really a message that they should um, relax and, you know, with all the power that right. they enjoy already. Thank you very much indeed to Mohamed Keita from the Committee to Protect Journalists in New York. And that's it for today. Thanks to all those of you who sent in comments to us. Uh, remember, you can email us at the address on screen, you can text us, or you can also follow us on Twitter. Many thanks to our guests, Eluma Ayele, Commander Asifa Seifu, and Mohamed Keita. Join us next week for another edition of Africa Today. Till then, it's goodbye. And on behalf of the whole team, thanks again for watching.